May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The passage this morning starts in chapter 13 of Acts and gives us like a three-versal thing. And did you notice that one of them, his, it talks about each member, right? There's a few members here. We have Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, the Cyrene, Manon, and Saul. Manon, or whatever, however you pronounce that boy, that guy's name, says that he was a member of the court of Herod. Now, Herod isn't really somebody that a Christian would want to associate themselves with. So I find it interesting that this member of this group of teachers, his tagline is that he's a member of the court of Herod. Um, because Herod was one that wanted to get rid of Christ. So why would this be something that we would want to hold up? But then again, who is Saul? Saul is Paul. Right? He hasn't changed his name yet. Actually, I've told the confirmation students uh, several times that Saul and Paul might have both been his name for quite a long time. Because it wasn't unknown of in that day. It's not even unknown of in this day. Um, to, have, to be known by different names to different groups of people. Right? Sometimes you're known by your full name to a group of people. Sometimes you're known by part of your name. Sometimes you're known by a nickname. I won't tell him what it is. Clyde is known by a nickname to his family. I see now he probably going to ask you. Right? We know him as Clyde. When when his family comes around, though, they call him something completely different. Right? And and those members of his family over here are laughing at smiling at me because they know what it is. But that's the case, right? Paul was probably Saul's Greek name. And it just took a while for it to be in transition. Because you read about Saul in the book of Acts. Saul was there when Stephen was martyred in chapter 7. They laid the, those that threw stones at, at Stephen laid their cloaks at the feet of Saul. So we have these, this band of, of teachers gathered together. And God sets apart Barnabas and Saul and sends them out. And then we go to chapter 14. Where we're now in the city of Lystra, right? Yes, Lystra. Bless you. Where Paul and Barnabas go about teaching and preaching and doing stuff. And when he's there, he sees this man. This man who has been crippled from birth. He's sitting there and he can't get up, he can't walk. He's never been able to walk. Bless you. God, and then Paul, Saul, has a connection with him. Saul looks into this man's eyes and sees that he's hearing what Saul is saying, that he's open and receptive, and that he has faith. And Saul says to him, get up and walk. And what does the guy do? He gets up and he walks. And then the people respond with, it goes from Paul, Saul and Barnabas spreading the news about God to something really strange happens. Right? They start saying in their own language that the gods have come to earth in human form and, and they're here with us and, and we have to do something to celebrate. And then there's a temple to Zeus right outside the city. And as I was listening to Kim read that this morning, I was thinking about a city we visited. And I don't remember what it was in Greece where there was outside the city, there was a temple to Zeus. I have pictures of this temple to Zeus. I should have had them up on the thing for you to look at. But it was outside the city. And they worshipped Zeus, Zeus in these temples. And so they thought that Barnabas was Zeus and Paul or Saul was Hermes. Right? So then they threw a feast and they started to make sacrifices to them. And Paul, Saul and Barnabas come running out, tearing their clothes, saying, don't do this for us because we're just like you. But how many times have we done this? How many times have we heard something and a story or from the gospel and taken it and put it into our own understanding, right? Because these people in Lystra really didn't do anything wrong. They saw something miraculous happen and they tried to explain it. They didn't just let it be and say, that's something that God is doing in our midst. That's something that God is doing, bless you, that, that we can't possibly understand. They wanted to explain it in a way that only they could. So they connected Paul, Saul and Barnabas 
I got Paul and Saul completely mixed up. They connected Saul and Barnabas to things that they understood, right or wrong. And they said that Saul and Barnabas were gods. They're not gods. They have the power of God flowing through them, which is what allowed them to do what they did. It's what allows each and every one of us to do what we do. It's what allows each and every one of us to go out into the world and to share God's love as we go. So don't think that this is some weird thing where these people all got it wrong. It's that they're just doing what we all do and trying to understand God and put it into a way that we can understand it and that we can explain it. Jesus, because sometimes God does things in ways that we can't possibly understand. God does things that we can't possibly explain. But we still try to. Because we want to understand it. There's another interesting part to this story, though, that caught my eye. And it was because I had a, a meeting this past week with um, a friend of mine. And we talked about some things. Um, there's a connection here between Saul and this crippled man. Right? Because... Saul is talking. He's preaching the gospel. He's telling them all about Jesus and what Jesus has done for all of us. And then all of a sudden he connects and he looks at this crippled man. And it, there's a connection there. Right? He looked at the man and he understood where he was at. He looked at the man and he knew something about him that wasn't possible for, for Saul to know. Have you ever done that? Have you ever just met somebody and instantly had some kind of connection with have you ever talked to somebody and over a period of time created a connection where you knew things about them that they hadn't told you? That you could feel things in their life that was happening, that you could understand the presence of where they're at at that given point in time. Has that ever happened? See, that's what happened to Saul and this man. My friend that I met with this past week talked about it as two concentric circles. And each person is a, is a circle. And those lives intersect. Just like each and every one of us, our lives intersect with everyone around us. And if we could simplify it to just two circles, right? Because it's not just two circles. But if we could simplify it to just two circles, there's a space in the middle, right? That both of us, that both of us exist in. There's a space that we both exist in. And it is that space that we share. It is that space that of our life and their life come together. And it is in that space that we can feel things about someone else that they might not possibly want to tell us. It's in that space we might understand things about somebody else that they might not even have ever told us about. It's in that space that we share the love that God has given to us. See, my friend didn't actually explain it this way because my friend is actually my therapist um, here. But it was in a session that we were talking about different things and we were talking about this space in between people and how it comes to an understanding and how if we live our lives in such a way we can empty ourselves out of that part of the circle, we will then completely understand who those other people are. And I don't think every one of us can empty ourselves out of that circle. But every one of us enters into relationships with every other person that we see. And see, that's where God wants us to exist. He wants us to exist in such a way that we can, like Saul did, look at somebody else and see that they're open and perceptive to what God is calling us to give to them. He wants us to live in such a way that our lives show forth His love in everything that we do. He wants us to live in such a way that we don't try not to go into that space, but that we live boldly out in that space. Because that's what's going to show everyone else exactly how much God loves us. And that's what's going to show everyone else exactly the love that God has for them and for all of creation. It's that space between that we need to live in. So I ask you this day, can you go as 
Saul and Barnabas were sent, because each and every one of us are sent as well. And can we go into the world to share the love that God has given to us, and not pull back from that space that we see as coming in contact with somebody else, but to boldly walk into it, knowing that God has given each and every one of us the strength to live in that space, so that we can share what God has graced us with, with everyone else in the world. Can we do that? I don't want us to show of hands. Because I don't want us to commit to something we don't think we can do. If you don't think you can do that, I'll pray for you. If you think you can do that, go and do it. Because that's what God has called each and every one of us to. To live our lives out loud. So that everyone can see how much God loves us and how much God loves them. So be like Saul and Barnabas. And go and share God's love with all the world.